All righty. Thank you and good morning from my side. So thank you so much for the nice introduction. I am very to be in front of all of you in this very distinguished round of researchers and experts in academia. Um, really, really great to be here uh, with you today. And I just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit what we are doing in SAP, how we collaborate with academia and research overall, but of course also talk a little bit about the topic that is most important to many of us these days, which is AI, and want to give you a glimpse of what we're doing there. Now, actually, quickly introduce myself, because many will probably not know me. So my name is Philip. I was born in the eastern part of Germany in the 80s, and I grew up there. And when I was eight, my grandfather actually gave me this. You remember this one? Who, who, who programmed on this one still? Short sure, raise of hands. Oh, not that many. So only so few people. Okay, I, I was sitting there and I was, I was doing basic programming the entire night when I was eight because that thing was there. And that was the first hook that got me actually then in computer science. And then, of course, later on, I kind of professionalized that a little bit, moved then to university, uh, did my PhD in distributed systems, uh, and, and then actually joined SAP during that PhD times in a kind of combined mode, bringing distributed systems when the cloud arrives and we try to bring together distributed systems and the implications and bring them together with SAP software specifically uh, for, for the cloud. And then just a few years later, an accident happened. I became a manager. And, and the, the good thing about that is, um, it, I, now in the Innovation Center, I'm trying to coach people and both researchers as well as developers on how to combine actually the greatness of technology and research with business outcomes because this is what SAP stands for. Because at the end of the day, we're of course a tech company on one side, but at the same time, we're also a business application company meaning we understand the business processes, the business data. So how companies truly work and what matters to companies all around the world, from really the biggest companies in the world using our software to the smallest companies in the world and helping them to really, really run best based on SAP. And SAP has over 400,000 customers. And we are serving them across all the various areas. And there's a lot, of course, technology that needs to empower that. Think about the supply chain, a lot of optimization algorithms if you think about warehouse operations, about transportation management, uh, if you think about finance, for example, and what you can do there in order to optimize uh, intercompany processes and many, many more things. And as part of all these aspects that we're doing, we are collaborating very much with a lot of universities. I'll talk a little bit later what we do specifically in AI. Uh, obviously, we work with the HPIs of the Hassel Plattner Institute, which is very close also related in Potsdam. We work with the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, with the TU Munich, TU Dresden, with Stanford, and many, many others across a variety of domains, and also not only on existing topics, but also new ones such as quantum computing. So we're exploring, for example, together with the TU Munich and automotive manufacturers on how can quantum computing, for example, help optimizing or in crypto to actually bring this together for business software as well. Uh, a very prominent example, uh, as, as I said already earlier, is actually um, AI. And I just talked to Vint here. I, uh, th thank you so much for, for being here with us today. But that is actually a slide that is also testimonial to you, because I think every 10 or 15 years, we have bus topics every year, but only every 10 or 15 years, a truly disruptive technology comes around the corner. And, and what I believe is, and this is a good slide depicting that, is it really becomes disruptive when it gets democratized. When a microchip was invented very early, but it only was democratized when the PC, when the, when the, when the, Apple, the Apple and, and the IBM PC came out. Uh, of course, there was so much work already in network and so on, but only when the internet came, it was truly democratized and all of a sudden became relevant. And also with AI, I mean, deep learning, convoluted, convoluted neural networks and the like, are there for, for, for more than a decade now. But only now with the rise of, and even transformer-based architecture is there since when, 2017, 18, when the first paper were written on that, but of course, it took us much more time now that with GPT-4, uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo, 
and the decoder-based architecture, which also in the industry was a surprise, uh, in, the, in the academia was a little bit of a surprise, it truly now became democratized, and all of a sudden, like, everybody is aware of that and, and knows what the power of AI is. And so these technology advancements are critically um, important. And yes, what we aim is with SAP, of course, is again what we always do. We take the technology, we also participate in the further development of the technology. But first and foremost, what we are doing is how can we leverage that in order to help customers and companies around the world to benefit from this? like never before in terms of productivity gains, reshaping the user experience. Generative AI specifically has the potential to rethink the user experience from command-based interaction to outcome-based specification. And what we're going to do, what we want to design is and use the AI to make it the most relevant for business. Because we all know what GPT, the big flaw is, it has been trained up to a certain point. It may hallucinate yeah. and many, many more things. But if you can ground it, in the, in the real-time system of, of the company, in the real-time system of, of, of an SAP system that, um, that powers the company and, and, and prompt it in the right way or fine-tune it in the right way, you can, of course, make it very, very relevant to, to use, on the one side, the, the huge power of large language models with the huge power of business data that resides in SAP systems. And bringing that together keeps us currently very busy. And another aspect, and this is also what we, what we want to arrive there, and SAP is kind of following a similar trend all over the years, and you see this here, right? It started, SAP started in the 70s, actually 1972, with batch processing, we called it R1, and then, then actually uh, real-time software came with real, real database on a, on, a, on a mainframe, we called it R2, and then client server came, we called it R3, and then the internet and mobile came, we called it the business suite, and so on and so forth. And now, of course, what we aim for with generative AI is to take the next leap to make, make AI pervasive uh, in business applications. And what we also do is not just integrating that, um, and that is maybe the last slide, just because it's, I know, the, the, this one first. So this is what I talked earlier, we partner for the first phase, we partner with a lot of the uh, tech companies out there who are now providing, for example, large language models or other multimodal models that are, that are now co coming up, and integrate those, whether this is here Heidelberg-based Aleph Alpha, whether this is OpenAI, whether this is uh, Google Vertex, whether this is Anthropic, and so on. We select the best models for the task that we are aiming for, and then via our AI foundation embed this across the portfolio, right, which is from sales and service software over HR software, finance software, supply chain software. SAP serves the company end-to-end -end with, its, with its rich portfolio, and then make it as relevant, reliable, and responsible uh, as, it, as it can get for businesses around the world. But it's not only taking existing large language models, but what we also are up to, but that is obviously a research topic, we know that generative AI works very, very well for things like text, video, audio, images, and, and, many, and, and those modalities. There was actually a new paper, I'm not sure if you saw it, that can actually has now a foundation model for smell, detecting smell. <laughs> Uh, as, a, as the last missing digital modality. I like reading that paper very much. I think it was published two, three weeks ago. And what we are up to, because that remains so far an unresolved research topic, is how can, because you know in SAP software is mostly based on tabular data. You have the data is stored in big, big tables, and actually many tables. And the question is, how can you take all that data and actually make predictions about the business. And in addition, what you have is you have a lot of rich metadata because all the tables and so on, of course, need to be <coughs> sorry, described such that <coughs> you can generate many of the UIs, for example. So there's a lot of metadata that surrounds uh, the data that is stored in the system. And of course, the question is also how can we combine the power of large language model with this metadata? You need somehow a translator in between. And this is where Knowledge Graph comes in. So you can take a Knowledge Graph that somehow helps you to interpret what you say in natural language and what that means in terms of this, the, the metadata model and the structured data that is today prevalent in almost all the companies out there in the world. And with the foundational model, we are aiming to solve them really to predict and make predictions uh, about businesses based on the vast amount of data that is stored within SAP data. The good thing is SAP has access to over 20,000 
uh, 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 databases of our customers in order to train a more foundational model that then can actually make predictions such as, given a certain invoice, tell me when will the customer pay? Or given a certain customer risk profile and payment history uh, or usage of the software, the product that I'm selling as a company, what is the likely churn or the, the, the likelihood, likelihood of the renewal for maybe a subscription or a service that I'm selling as a company. And this foundational model aims to not just solve it in a narrow AI way, we did it in the last couple of 10, 20 years, but actually be able to use prompting in order to retrieve those answers from this foundational model. And for this, we are working with a lot of also um, um, research institutes with a lot of universities um, here together. And yes, with that, uh, we are looking forward, like we always did, to collaborate as much as we can also with, uh, with academia, with research, because that uh, is something where we can really truly move the needle and make this uh, a better world, not just for SAP, but for all of us. And with that, I'm looking forward to all the conversations later.